Attention, It's the daily dose. Daily dose. Daily dose. Welcome to The Daily Dose with... I'm Dr. Kendra, your OBGYN next door. And I'm Dr. Ten, your anesthesiologist from around the block. Ooh. And we are Doctors, Doctors Ken, Ken and Ten. Ten. Here, we will be prescribing you with a daily dose of info and reality. Checks. That's right. So make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to us at Doctors Ken and Ten. Let's get started. Girl, what's up? I'm loving the electric blue lipstick. Do you like it? It's very dark. And mysterious, but um, yeah, it's by Anastasia. Anastasia, Anastasia. And what about those earrings? Because I'm loving clip on the, the L hip hop. Okay, let's take a look here. That um, you walked in, and I was like, Oh, oh, you don't need she anything taking else. it back. Damn, she didn't go bamboo, she went bam boom. Hell yeah, on that ass. And you this took it credit. back. This is extra credit. You don't even okay. need none of this. This is extra credit. Is it? All you need are Ooh. these. Let me just give them some. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna step, step back. Just stay still. So I'm gonna step. Can y'all see that? No. Okay, let's do so, it. So, Britton, I want to know mm. why you went into medicine. Oh, okay. So, I went into medicine because growing up with a single mother um, who worked two full time jobs within the same day, she went to one job, went to the next one right after. Wow. So, she would leave at like seven in the morning, she would come home at about midnight. Or close to midnight. So she had really long days, and this was basically five days, six days a week. So then you just came so, home and took care of yourself? Yeah, what? me and my brother just kind of, yeah, we were latchkey kids. Wow. 100%. Yep. Wow. And so she, you know, she worked really hard. She was dedicated to the family and providing for us, and I just didn't want to work that hard. I wanted one job that would pay all the bills, and um, I just thought to myself, what profession would allow that? And I thought, yeah, I'll, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm smart enough to do it. This is this is me talking, right? Like, what do I know? I'm like, yeah, I'm smart. I can right, do it. Right, right, right. You I get all A's. You have confidence. Oh, you got mm -hmm. A's. Okay, that's it. That's well, I good, mean, but I didn't that's know. A good indicator but I didn't know what it took to become right. a doctor. But right. I just thought to myself, they look like, you know, they have to be smart. Who they gave make you a lot that idea? Like, you know what? Um, actually, I thought I was gonna be an attorney because my mom, one of her jobs, she I worked at so an attorney's see office. Her being an attorney. I could not. Why I? I could not. <laughs> but I actually, from the Cosby Show. I saw how the Huxtables were living and they were living large. And I was they like, were. I have to, I got to look into that. So I decided I went to a doctor. Yeah, that's okay. kind of, and I was good in science. I enjoyed Did you know it. Any it was I knew zero. So yeah, wow. no, I didn't have any, I didn't know anybody that, Graduated college. I didn't know. What? Okay, so then how did you have the self esteem? I mean, other than getting straight A's, how did you have that confidence to say, I'm going to be a doctor? That's huge. No, I just, I don't know. I don't know where but it comes from. But did your mama say that, yes, you can? Like, was your mother telling you you can be president? No one told like, me where anything. was all this coming from? No one told My mom was just, she was the kind of mom that was like, whatever you want to do, I support it. She didn't give me any ideas, except if I brought something to her, she would encourage it. But she, she herself didn't say, you know what, I think you should be a doctor. No, I, it was just all within me, I guess. I just didn't. So were you always on the honor roll? Like, where yeah. did, I'm just trying to find where the confidence came from. Like, I'm smart. I could do this because a lot of times I mean, a lot of us don't see it. We don't get straight A's and, you know, no one tells us to be I, a doctor. I just, maybe I just, a nurse, I felt right? It. Come on, maybe a nurse. I, I felt it. I wanted to do it and I was like, that's where I'm going. And so that was my trajectory. That was, that was it. Okay. So then why anesthesiology? Oof, so I hated everything else. To be honest. Why? I did not like it. Maybe I didn't like it. I'm sure that was that. one of the worst. Ah, look at her. Yes. I came like, what? So no, I didn't like anything else. And then I finally did a rotation in anesthesia. Okay. And that's where I felt like, okay, this is where it all happens. When, when it goes down, it's not the ER. It's right. the OR. You, oh, it's the OR. Like right? Is, am speak, I lying? Can you say that again? It's when the goes down is not in the ER it's in the OR Damn right. so when people come in those traumas straight to the OR so that's why I was like oh because that's why I, you know what I actually thought ER or anesthesia 
And then I did a oh, rotation okay. in the ER, and okay. I was like, this is family practice. Right, but you're just like, you know, saying, go, go here, be admitted to internal, yes, be admitted it was, to surgery. You you're know? the gatekeeper to right. the hospital. And very it's important. All, it's very important. Very important. But it was all family practice to me, and I didn't right. like family practice. So you like adrenaline? You like I, action? I'm an adre- I like the adrenaline of anesthesia. I love the immediacy. So if I want your blood pressure low, I just give you a medication, and it's instantly lowered i don't have to watch chronic illnesses i don't have to wait for you to take your medicine That's come true. back and see how it works i do it and see it as it is so you real don't, time you don't like, it's real time so you don't like outpatient settings you like to no. be in the hospital well no, no no okay no so things have changed since then i mean i've been at this for a minute so, so in her career she kind of changed what i wanted to what do. she wanted to do and that's cool. Career change. We should talk about that, too, in another episode. Right. But career change is important. I feel like I've done it. I've been there. What's next? So, yeah, that adrenaline rush was great in the beginning. It was great, you know, in the military. And after that, I was like, I could use something a little bit slower. I want to be around for the kids. I that's don't want to work as so hard. It was you being a mom wanting to be there for the family. Yeah, being a mom changed it for me. And I know, you know, from my experience, how my mom, you know, she was a mother who really couldn't physically be around all the time because she was working really hard for That's us. One, they so, don't make them like you, that mama. no more. I thank love you, you, mommy. Thanks for everything. Thank so you. why did you go into medicine? So for me, you know, my story is a little different where I never thought that I would want to be a doctor. Like I mm-hmm. never like, you know, dreamed about, oh my God, I'm going to be a doctor. So I so wanted to be a tennis from? player. So it was my first dream. And long story short, you know, I got injured, you know, it it wasn't working out, you know. And so then I went through this phase where I was in no man's land. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about everything. I went, I was thinking about chiropractors. Was this in college? This this? was after college. Okay. Okay, So I did a year where I paid um, professional, you know, and I realized that, you know, through my injuries, this isn't something that's going to sustain me for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a huge decision and I had to end my career. And it's kind of difficult, like, you know, if you can relate. Talk like about a career change. You know, like thinking of yourself as an athlete. That's all I ever knew. Mm-hmm. And I never imagined myself in anything else. And so I was one of those college students that I constantly took those tests um, to see, like, who, like, what can you do? Mm-hmm. And every time I took the exam, okay, every year I took it. Different it said moves, she was going to be a hoochie. I was, it said I was going to be a teacher. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, hell no. What? Oh, hell no. No. Although you are good at giving lectures and information. I could see you as a teacher. But I think I've learned, like, okay, as I got older and I said, okay, you know what? I know this. I like to teach in this setting. So maybe not a classroom, um, but definitely. Do you teach residents now? Um, no, not not now. And, you know, God bless residents. But, you know, I'm at a different point in my life where, you know, I'm worried about and focused on other things. So you kind of just want to get in and get out, mm-hmm. you know. But um, anyway, so I did lots of different things. I taught, actually. I was a teacher um, in Koreatown. I taught math and English, okay. I was a tennis teacher, okay. I Do you speak Korean? No, but they all spoke English, you know, it's okay. So what were you teaching them? Um, like after school, math. We were teaching them how to curse in English. English. And you know what? No one will listen to me. My sister had to come in there because she worked there too. My sister has an authority that I just don't have. And thank God for her. Shout out to my sister, Nina. I know you YouTube. So like, subscribe. Okay. Or hate. Whatever you need to do, (laughs) do it. Okay. So then I even worked in a lab. Okay. okay, I was an assessioner. Can you believe that? An assessioner. What? Let's say that again. I was spell it. An assessioner. Assessioner. Yes. So that is where when people um, we get lab the blood, mm-hmm. and they have numbers on it, mm-hmm. and then I was the person that put in the numbers into the computer in that chart, mm. so they can get processed correctly. Okay. Okay. So tell us about medicine. Why don't you? Um, so then I got into it after I became an epidemiologist, which is mm. the study of disease. And I know I, I couldn't even say it for the longest time. But can you spell it? Um, probably at another time I get really nervous <laughs> about <laughs> spelling or adding in public. Ooh, can anybody okay. relate? That's a phobia of mine. Okay. And so that's why I can't ever be on any game show because I just We're going to be on a game show it. now. That's, 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 that's next. That. Coming up next, the doctors, Ken and Ken. (laughs) You know, and so then, you know, working around doctors, being around doctors, that kind of motivated me to say, wait a minute, if (laughs) 
Yeah. You mean because you had all these injuries? No, because I, okay, so back up. So public health, once I entered public health, mm -hmm. that's when I was working and going to school okay. with physicians. Okay. And so I never knew a doctor. I never knew a person in the medical field, nursing, physician assistant. I didn't even know what that was. And so I think because I was exposed to mm -hmm. doctors, then I, I got an idea. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, maybe I can too. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's important. You know, that's why I try to mentor. And I was going to say mentorship. It's and important. Having someone, a, a role model. And important. I wasn't on YouTube. YouTube wasn't like, you know, popular. it didn't exist. It didn't, Don't lie. It okay. didn't exist. You know, I ain't that. Did girl. you hear she was trying to say it wasn't popular? Girl, it wasn't popular. It was I not invented. It, it okay. It wasn't popular, guys. Okay. There's no live on um, YouTube. Oh. Okay. And so then I ended up getting into medicine. So, OBGYN was the last thing I ever wanted to do. I'm going to tell you, y'all OBGYNs are so brainwashed. Everyone I know that's an OBGYN is like, I love women's issues. I I'm going to help every woman. I We're going to fix that was vagina. A girl's girl. I never was a girl's girl. I was that girl that had a lot of male friends. I was a tomboy. Okay. And so I never was into women's health. And that's ironic because I had women's health issues. I mm. can't look at you like this or I have to turn. Okay. Okay, because the Cause earring head, the oh. earring is in the way, guys. But you know when you're trying to look bamboo, cute, you've got to work with the clothing, the jury. And so um long story short, it was when I delivered my first baby. Mm. At that point I realized that I didn't want to go into a specialty where everybody was sick. Okay. You got to be healthy to have sex and have babies. And so if you do have problems, it's something immediate. Okay, you're bleeding. You don't need that uterus no more. Okay, you already had your kids. It's causing you havoc. It's rebelling against you. Let me take it out. And then you're happy. And then you get to live How do life. you feel about taking out um, uterus thigh? Uteruses? Uteri. Uteri. I like it. That's you know? a plural? Uteri is a plural. Uteri. Okay, you so mm. OBGYN is a happy field. You're giving life. It is. When I did my OB rotation, I was more interested in the baby being handed off oh, than really? I was about the patient. That's when I knew I couldn't do OB. I was opposite. I, I was like, I was oh, the baby, baby. What, what the baby do? This is the baby. And I'm like, okay, here. Just, oh, it's crying. Get oh, I did my job. Just here, peas, mom, here. Take it. So I knew I couldn't do peds. Okay, you gotta have a strong, you have a gut of steel to do peds. No, peds, I can't. my hat's off to all you pediatricians out there because that's a tough. It's a tough job. So, yeah. So, you know what? You got to keep an open mind because when you have something in your mind that's set that, you know, I thought I was going to do internal medicine, infectious disease. That's what I went into it. So I fought OBGYN. I had in my mind how my life is going to go. But if you just give into the process, yeah. give into whatever your life is in real time yeah. instead of thinking about, well, I planned this or I planned that. So once you give in, then the world is yours. They I didn't think up. I would go into anesthesia at all. I remember being What did you think you would go into? When I went in, I didn't really know. I know I loved plastic surgery. I loved plastic surgery, but I didn't want to live the lifestyle of a plastic surgeon. I wanted to have some freedom, some time for my family. And that's what so anesthesia, that's why I didn't, she, that, I anesthesia well. has a good lifestyle. Don't, yeah, like, I, why I is that? So. Tell us well, why. Well, I mean, because we're kind of, we're, we're in and we're out. We don't, we don't have patients that call us. Right. Like we don't we don't have people we see in clinic on a regular basis. We're, they're not our patients. Other than your pre -op. We're like other than the pre-ops. We're only the consult. I met her at her pre-op, actually. So we did her pre-op or I did her pre-op for her C-section, her cesarean right, section. Right, because I was high risk, which we'll get into that at another time. But she reassured me. So you like so you do get that contact. We you do like have that? that. I do. I enjoy it. I actually do. It's but it's limited and I don't have. To, I don't have to have a, a long-term relationship with the patient. And there's no results. You don't have an in-basket. I don't mind that. Results is something that. that doctor, in-basket is something that every doctor, most doctors, depending on your specialty, okay, you have to kind of look up to see, you know, you order something because you're managing them. Yeah. And you want to follow up and call them or have the nurse call them. And so it can get overwhelming. And so, if they have issues, they call you or your office. See, I don't have to deal with any of that stuff. That, so it's really in and out. It's in and out. And I, that's what I enjoy. I, I like the, I love the immediacy. I love the fact that our relationship is slightly limited. I mean, but I enjoy that. I enjoy when I meet a patient, I have to win them over in, in 10 minutes. I have she, to win them over. You and guys, I just, hey, hey, hey. She won me over. I did. I made her my boo. She did. She won me over. Okay. So, you know, so it depends on what you want. You know, I like, on the other hand, I like relationships. I long like term. she long likes term. To long term. Okay, so I like, I like short when you're you know you're pregnant. Okay, we deliver the baby. Okay, now we're doing your Wellman exams. Now maybe I might be taking out your uterus because.
it don't work no more and it served its purpose. So I like relationships, but I don't like chronic illness. And mm -hmm. so that's where, you know, gynecology gives me that immediate satisfaction. And so, you know, keep an open mind. That's my advice to pre-meds, medical students. Should we residents. explain to them the steps it takes to become a physician? Let's do it. Okay. Let's After do high it. school, you go to college. Okay, you have to do your four years of college. While you're there, you take what we call prerequisites to go into medical school. And that's just basically classes that every medical school in the country wants you to have taken before you apply to a medical right. school. Right, the basic core, I think 10 core requirements. So you can be any major, actually. Yeah. You don't have to be and a bio actually, major or biochemistry. Actually, having a different major from biology and chemistry is kind of nice because it makes you look more well-rounded, more interesting. And that became a subject at hand at one time, I, I believe, in when I was coming through. Because a lot of physicians at the time, early 2000s, you know, by that time people were like, hey, you don't have good bedside manner. You know, hey, yeah. you know, um, patients don't really understand important. you. So that's why they're promoting for you. You can be a humanities major or requirements. Psychology majors. I was psychology. Oh, you were? I was. Dope. I was. Yeah. Dope. Okay. And those skills you can use to this day. I've already diagnosed her pathology. With fabulous. <laughs> right? You do four years of medical school. In your last year of medical school, you apply to a residency program. And so by your last year of medical school, you have to have decided what field you want to study, what field of medicine you want to go into. I chose anesthesia, she chose OBGYN. Mm -hmm. It was tough. So she, it. yeah, so she, it was tough for both of them. Yeah, yeah undecided, I mean, damn. So you basically decide, okay, I'm gonna go into this field and you start applying to residency programs. Those programs- So what is residency? A residency is basically your training in that specialty. So if I chose anesthesia as my specialty, I would choose an anesthesia residency where I learn anesthesia. She cho chose OBGYN, that is where she learned all things OBGYN. Hands-on, so I guess it's like hands-on yeah, training. Yeah, it's the, it's the, yeah, it's the, the training that you need to practice that specialty. And that usually on average is four years, depending on what specialty it is. Surgeons usually take a little bit longer. Yeah, surgeons are five, OBGYNs four. We're four. Internal medicine, family three. medicine are three years. Yeah. And I think psych is four too. So just on depends. average, it's about four years. So it just depends on which specialty you choose. So you do your residency and after that you take your boards and that's where Woo! you are board certified. There is nothing else you have to do. You have come to the the mountain top. Right. Like you are done. Right. Um, but you could further take it to a fellowship yes. where you further specialize in your specialty. And so for anesthesia, for instance, we would have a cardiac fellowship where you do cardiac anesthesia. Or an OB. Or you can fellowship. do OB. Or you can do neurology. Neuro. Did you do a fellowship or no? I didn't do a fellowship. Okay. I stayed general. Okay. There's pediatric and I'm also a fellowships. general OBGYN. But again, you could do a fellowship. Mm -hmm. You can do laparoscopic or, or minimally invasive. Yes, or perinatology, which is a high risk doctor. Or you can do the fertility, they call it REI, fertility doctor. Yeah, so but you I can do fellowships if you want. I stopped, I had had enough. So, uh, okay, so for those of you out there, she just talked about the traditional way. I was a non-traditional medical student, so meaning that I was an older medical student, I did something else first, and I had to try to figure it out. And also, I went to a Caribbean medical school, Ross University School of Medicine. Whoop, 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 whoop. Um, so everybody has their reasons for you know going to a DO, okay school or a caribbean school so for me it was basically you know you're I was, an md i'm an md okay. i'm an md so i chose to go to ross because i was older you know i was 27 28 and i just either had to do it or choose a different route so at that time at my job that i was working at LA County, I was working with a lot of people that went to Caribbean medical schools and it was just rolling admissions versus American medical schools. You have to wait a year or two. It's very competitive in the sense where you have to have good scores, do more research. And I was fighting time. Mm -hmm. So I literally had to make a decision that, you know, Kendra, it's now or never again. I wasn't going to start it when I was 30. So I was already yeah. 28, so it was like now or never. I chose medical, the MD versus DO, is because um, the principles, you know what I mean? Nothing against DOs, um, but that's another route that you can take that's non-traditional. Yeah. So there's different ways to get to the same 
goal. But, but once she got into medical school, it was the same path. Exactly. It's med it, school to residency to fellowship. That's how you do it. Some of us, Long you know, days of studying. I mean, wow. If I had to do, okay, if you had to do it again, would you? That's yeah, a bigger question. I would. But you know, the, what's funny though, I say all the time, I would have never done this. But when I actually think, like, what the hell would I do? I, that, there's I would, nothing else, right? What's going to get would, you out of bed on a Monday morning after a bomb weekend? Saving lives. That's right. Because people, patients need us. They do. And so at the end of the day, we are doing our own little bubbles. We're saving the world. So until next time, stay in school. If you don't like your job, back to stay in school, boo boo. <laughs> okay. All right. So in this segment, we're going to do some clap back. Okay. So for all y'all folks out there that be hating, that been hating on us, we got some words for you. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what my clap back is. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. So someone posted on our Married to Medicine promo shoot that um, whoever did my hair needs to be smacked because I look like a fool. What? Because you look like a fool. What? Now, I don't know about you, but I thought, I thought my hair was pretty damn My girl dry. is cutting edge. I had the braids with the mohawk braided on the side, big ass braid in the middle with the mohawk. I thought I was doing it, okay? Now... I guess to someone I was not, but you let me just what? tell you this: Shit, I don't give a damn about your opinion of my fly hair. I know how to serve up some fashion, okay? Cutting you, edge. Cutting you edge. are the one who clearly don't know what fashion. And you wearing like. that hairstyle right now? That's right. I bet you rock and match. Have like, you noticed know that? Like people are always like, "Ew, why is she wearing that?" And then I find out you went and, and you kind of did a remix on that. You tried to do a little twisty root instead of a braid. But that's Ooh, what that's the, same the thing. risk you take when you're a fashionista. That's true. I take risks. Look, look at her lipstick, y'all. I take risks. Now, moving on, y'all. Moving on. What's your clap back? Troll comment of the day. Okay, let's hear Okay, it. so basically, um, I did a house tour, which some of you probably watching know. I'm Bravo. And I did that house tour right in the beginning when I first moved in. And so, troll comment of the day. So um, I was holding my baby for about an hour. See, you guys, when we're filming, you know, we're doing things for a long time, even though it's what, like a two minute like snippet. And yeah. so someone said um, when I was giving Hoju, Hoju is Hobart Jr. Okay, so Hoju for short, my son. So when I gave Hoju off to the nanny, mm -hmm. somebody said, um, damn. She can't even hold her baby just to give a damn tour. And we over here holding our baby doing five, six, seven things. Baby on hip. Why are you hating? And the you, baby, have you seen her baby? He's heavy as hell. Heavy. He is he, heavy. He, she he, got steroid he, milk up in them titties. I right. Mean, he is like, he's <laughs> dense. Hold you he's solid. Thick. He's solid. He is just solid and so through and through. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two. I was huffing and I was puffing, I was sweating. So obviously I was doing a lot. So, you know, I understand, I get it. That comment was probably okay, because I get it, because you just see a snippet and then you just see me handing it off. Like, here, take it, here, Nicole. You know, I was doing all that. So I get it, but there's always a little bit more to it. There's so more to it. That's true. Another comment I have to say. This oh, is a, you got two? I got two. Oh. I got two. Y'all, you guys were tough on me. I just had you one. You guys were tough on me on that house tour. So. I, majority of the time, internet is undefeated. I agree with trolls. I mean, shit, I did it myself. But be a smart troll. Be smart about it. Okay. Okay, so this comment was. She getting fired up, y'all. Why is she doing a house tour and she know that her house is messy? So we can know that you a messy person? Ugh. You should have, you should have cleaned it up before you let cameras in. So why Ugh. did you let cameras in? Ugh. Why did you let them Ugh. in? So I let cameras in people because this is a reality show. I that just moved. Real. My baby's what, three months old? And you guys want to see this? Okay, I just moved. Here you go. I'm not going to clean up or do anything. I was up all night. I was coming from work. So if you can't handle reality TV, stick to the soap operas. Oh. Okay? Ooh. Stick to the fake shit. Well, that is reality as you see it, okay? We will, cl we will clap back.
Okay, so okay, that's so the end in, of that. Tune so in. tune in next time. Okay. okay? <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all. We love y'all. Okay, until next time. Thank you for stopping out to get your daily dose. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to us at Drs. Ken and Ten. Until next time. Doses. Attention. It's the daily dose. Daily dose. Daily dose.